Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend, I'm a video specialist here at eLearning Brothers. Today we're going to be talking about our new PowerPoint styles. These are some uh, new products that we've added to our PowerPoint libraries. This webinar will be recorded, we'll get a copy of it sent out to everyone in attendance uh, later today, and we'll also be posting the recording on our blog um, tomorrow, uh, later in the week tomorrow. If you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions in the questions panel, and we'll try to take some of those questions um, verbally as well to make sure that all of the information is being shared amongst all of the registrants and attendees. Just so you know, one of the things we like to do after the webinar is try to follow up as soon as possible. Sometimes it's just to get feedback. Most of the time we would like to touch base and find out if anyone needs some one-on-one -on -one clarification on the webinar topics after the fact. Also, we're going to be giving everyone in attendance a free eLearning Brothers account. So if you don't already have one of those, you can be looking forward to that to uh, come to your email uh, later in the week as well. We have Nick Brown, our Director of Product and Design with us today to talk to us about PowerPoint. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to hear what you have to say. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to you. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you for everybody who's with us today. Looks great. Great. All right, so as Andrew mentioned, I am going to be going over our, our styles that we have built in PowerPoint. So my goal uh, for this is to go over what those actually are um, and show you how to, how to edit them and use them, uh, what uh, we offer currently uh, in our styles, and then what uh, you can expect uh, to come later. So what are ELB PowerPoint template styles? So <clears throat> a style to us is a family of templates that use the same look and feel. Um, so we currently offer 20 templates in a style, uh, and those files uh, include an icons file, um, they include a layouts file with 26 different layout options in it. Uh, we have charts and graphs, uh, we have dashboards, timelines, gauges, um, and scenarios, and more. So I would like to show you a few of those um, before we get into building anything. Um, the icons file you see here, has some custom icons included with it. Um, then we have a title page from our layouts file and our scenario. Uh, then we have a process flow uh, and then an infographics one you see right here. And then a dashboard with some charts and graphs. Uh, so now I want to show you um, how I would use these files to build the presentation. So I'm going to close out of this and uh, I'm going to, so I, I would start with our layouts file uh, just because that's going to have most basic elements that you would need um, and then you can you can copy and paste and add in any of the other templates slides that you would like into it. So I'm going to start with um, our jet black layouts file. So you can see on our film strip that we have um, 26 different layout options that are built out for you. Now all of these um, were built in our master slide so I'm actually going to get rid of these for now um, so I can show you how to update this file and change um, the theme options inside the master view. So um, to go to the master view, you can go to view, slide master, and you can see all those layouts that were on that view are right here as well. Um, the Mac, keyboard shortcut to get to master view is uh, command option one. And to go back to the normal view, it'll be mm, command one. Um, if you're on a Mac, I would learn those because you would um, go back and forth a lot. 
Uh, on a PC, as far as I know, there's not an option for that. Um, so you just close and go back into it. So you can see on our main slide master, there is an image set here. Uh, now, if I want to change this image, um, I right click and I go to format picture. Now, there are two options to um, use the image. You can place an image like there is now, you can see like it moved around, and that allows you to crop it how you'd like um, or move it around as you would please. Um, the other uh, option is to fill the background uh, itself. So um, let's go to this image here. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to the fill first and then so if I get rid of this and then I can go to picture fill and then from my files I can select the image I'd like to use and as you see that cascades down through all my layouts now I have that background image <clears throat> um, you can adjust the transparency if you want to so it's not um, as bright uh, you can also add a color box of this if you'd like to. And then you see that also cascades down through all your files. So, um, As you see, as I said, we have all these pre-built for you, uh, and every every element has been uh, applied to a color or a font that is in, with, in this theme. Uh, but if you want to change that, it's really, really easy. Um, so again, I'm in the master view, uh, and then under colors, I can go customize, and then I can update and change any of these I want. Uh, let's say I want to change this dark color to this pink color. When I hit save, it's going to change every element that had the, that color in our theme applied to it. Now um, is changed to this pink color. So it, it's really, really easy and fast to, um, to brand these uh, because everything, like I said, is applied to a theme element. Uh, now for fonts, um, actually let me go to one of these other ones that have more on them. Um, any of these that I want to use, we can change. You can see how all the fonts update uh, for you. <laughs> All right, so that's how you can quickly change um, the basic theme elements. Now I'm going to go back to the normal view. And from here, I'm going to add our first slide. So by default, it's going to add the first slide from your slide master, which we have set up all of our files to have a title type slide in there. So if I click on layout, you can see all of those layouts that are, that are built in our master slides, and that one has, has been added. Uh, we've also placed um, all of our text boxes as placeholder. So all you have to do is click and type. Um, images have been placed for you just to kind of give you an idea um, of how you can use an image. If I wanted to change this image right here, um, I would need to go to the master slide. So again, on a Mac, it's command option one. And then here I can right click and change picture, or I can just remove it and add a new one. But what I want to show you is, is how to set this up to be your own template so that this slide can be reused 
um, over and over again, but you're still able to change that picture out. So I'm going to remove this picture and then I'm going to uh, go to insert placeholder and then go to picture. And then I'm going to draw my shape there. Now, when I go back to my normal view, um, sometimes you have to reapply a slide for it to take effect. So I'm going to re-click this on there, and now you can see that it, it has a placeholder. So if I want to change uh, this picture and come in here, just click insert, and there it is. Uh, now, if I don't have an image that's cropped to this exact size, like one I have here, I can go to Format Picture, and under Crop, you can adjust and move the picture around, up and down, and left and right, to be wherever you, wherever the most important part of, of the picture shows up. <clears throat> All right, Nick. So a couple quick questions about um, what you showed us so far. Okay. Um, one is you showed at the very beginning a couple of layouts that uh, come in the PowerPoint template uh, or in the style. Um, but as you clicked on that layout drop down, there were tons more. How many layouts are inside of each style? Uh, so there are 20. 20. Sorry, exactly. sorry there are 26. Okay, so 26. So when you say, what so, was this one called, Jet Black? So if I go and download the Jet Black style uh, from the eLearning Brothers PowerPoint library, I'm really getting 26 layouts inside of that? Yes. Okay. And then do people have to replace these images? What if they grab Jet Black because they liked the pictures that were included? Can they use those still? Yes, they can. So, so those images came from our stock library, so the, um, you are able to use them. Um, we assume that most of the time people won't want to use them because the most of the time they aren't going to fit whatever their, their sure. needs are. But if you don't have one and you want to use that one, yes. Okay, awesome. Um, don't, don't hesitate to keep sending in your questions. We'll take them as we can. Yes, definitely. All right. Um, okay. So now, um, maybe I want to add an icon to my title slide. So from the uh, Jet Black icons file that I got from our library, uh, I'm going to open it. And so all of the, all of these icons uh, have been imported as SVGs and um, are now converted to a custom shape so you can you can edit um, their fill their stroke their size which I will show you um, in just a minute <clears throat> but I'm just gonna copy and paste this into my file and it automatically applied my new theme color to it that's why it's pinky you can't see it uh, so I'm going to format the fill uh, maybe I want white and maybe I want to have five stars together on here. Something maybe like this. Um, one of the best perks about these icons that have been uh, brought in um, as vectors is that they have retained like I said, all their qualities, so you can edit them uh, as you please, and you can scale them to be as big as you would like, and they will re retain their crisp and clean lines. Um, so maybe I want to add this star element to my master slide for this title, uh, just to give it a little extra uh, spunk. Uh, so you can see as you scale it, it, it looks very crisp and clean still. And then maybe I want to change this to be a tint of this. Oh, and I forgot to mention that when you update your colors of your theme, um, these are the colors that show up 
um, in, as a swatch in your um, swatch options. So that's all these colors that are right here. So maybe I want to have a couple of these. Do something like this. And we'll bring this to the front. All right, so I'll go back to my normal view. And you can see that it has applied that to this. Um, so with these icons, like I said, you can edit uh, their fill and their stroke. So uh, let's maybe have to update this one. It'd be this blue color. Give it a stroke. Maybe you want that to be white. A little larger, and maybe you want it to be a dotted line. So it's really, really easy to um, update and change and brand um, these icons. Uh, I know that we only um, give you a small amount of icons in this file, but if you have access to our icon library, um, you can download any of them um, as SVGs and use them in here just like I am um, with these. And we, and we have close to 80,000 icons. So coming back to this again, Nick, um, the icon library and, and other files, um, the question is, um, are all of the images that are included in the templates uh, free to use for any purpose without attribution or loyalty. Yeah, as long as long as it's it's within your organization and it's for e-learning use. And you you purchased that library. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, and then another question that came up about SVGs and uh, PNGs. Is there advice on downloading these as SVGs? Um, SVGs better than PNG because the ability to change the color, etc. Um, how, how would you respond to that? Are, are all of these only downloadable as PNG? No, so every icon that we have in our icon library can be downloaded as a PNG or an SVG. Um, I I would almost always download it as an SVG because just as I show you here, you can edit and change everything about it. Way more customizable. Yes. In fact, uh, Nick did a webinar about that in May. If you guys want to look at, uh, you know what, I'll just post that in the chat. If you guys have questions about SVGs in PowerPoint, um, there's a blog that I will post in the chat for you all to look at. All right. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. So maybe I like that title, so I like that. Um, and now I'm ready to add some more um, slides to this. So I can go to new slide and pull up all of my layout options. And maybe I have an objective slide uh, that I want to list out all the key points. Um, and as you see, you just click and type. Um, and all the elements were built on the master slide. So if I want to change or update these, I can just go into the master slide. And maybe I want to change this to this blue. Same with this text color. And then I go back to my normal view, and you can see that it has updated. <clears throat> uh, maybe let's add one more to this. All right, so again, I can type in my title, subtitle, and master slide to edit this image if I would like. And I can right click. Actually, to make it easier, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to change uh, the background picture itself. Oops. And 
we go. So it's as easy uh, as that really. And then you just go through and keep adding in your layout, your content that you need. Um, and then when you're ready to bring in some of our other files, uh, it's, it's uh, as easy as copy and paste really. So let me open up uh, one of these files and I'll show you how to do that too. All right, so I'm going to bring in this timeline file. So I'm gonna open the Jet Black version of this. Uh, and I'll just preview this for you so you can see what it, what it does. Oops, let me go back to the first slide. So as I click, it's going to change the text and have a little animation for the year on the left. You can see to go through, kind of fun. Um, so the cleanest way to bring this uh, file into your presentation is to copy and paste the master slides. So I go to slide master view, select all these, copy, and then go my, my slide master view in this file. And paste and as you can see it has applied all of our theme changes to each element all by itself the text has changed the colors changed so now I can go to my normal view and I can select from these files each time to add in each of these here See, and then you would just click in each of the text boxes and add in all of your text here. And let me just do that real quick so I can show you just really how, how easy it is to do. Um, and you could set this up with these numbers already um, typed out if you wanted to on your master slide, but um, if you wanted to reuse this later for something else and, and change them to be dates or whatever, you would have to either make a new copy of them in your master slides um, or just do what I'm doing um, and, and just leave them as uh, placeholder text boxes. Uh, and I'll just quickly I've been thinking here, so when I preview it, it'll show something, because if you don't, it, it won't show anything on preview. All right, so let me preview this for you, so you can see animations are all still there. The text I put in is now there, and it changes for each one. <clears throat> um, let me copy in one more file for you, so you can Make sure that you uh, get the process how it works. I'm going to bring in a uh, a bar graph. So again, I'm, I'm going to open the Jet Black file. And then go to the master slide, copy, and go to master slide here, and paste. Um, and maybe I don't like what theme elements have been changed here the way it is. Uh, so we can go ahead and change that if we want to. So like background, fill, maybe I want it to be dark instead. And maybe I want this box at the bottom to be the pink and not blue. Uh, and then maybe I want to change the color of uh, this chart. Uh, so if, if you click on the chart and then you click on the chart design tab, uh, some predefined options are here for you um, under change colors. And then you can click through and see which ones you like. Uh, or if you don't like any of those options, you can click on each of these elements and change all of them on your own. So maybe I want this one to be a red color, this set maybe light gray, last one blue. So it's really easy to update and change all of these. Um, the other thing that's great about most of our charts and graphs and our dashboards is that they are tied to an Excel sheet. 
uh, so you can update and change the data. So if you click on the chart, right, sorry, if you right click on the chart and uh, edit data in Excel, it will bring up the Excel sheet that has that data tied to it. And as you change the information, it will update in your file. So they want to call this bar one, bar two. You can see how it updates right here my file. And I change this number to 10, 30, 22. You can see how they get updated in the file. I just close that and then um, go to my normal view and I can add this slide to my presentation. Click add my title and you are good to go. All right, a couple more questions have come in. Sure. Um, the first one is, can you please go over the animation that you created for the timeline frame? Is it uh, is the animation on each separate slide, so those those four that moved down through the hexagon shapes. Sure. Um, how are those animated? I will show you. So on the master view, um, uh, you can see, oops, There we go. Uh, you can see the animation that was applied to it. Um, so it has a bounce in, bounce out, and then um, it's a um, spin, and then we set the easing to bounce. So it'll it'll do. It does the. Um, so three degrees turn and then um, the easing bounce and the same with uh, these except instead of bounce it's just um, a fly in I believe. And so this happens on each slide at the very beginning? Yeah. And at yeah. the very end? Or just the beginning? No just just um, on, on load so at the start so as, as you click next this animation would play on this slide and then you click next this animation would play on this slide okay okay great um, another question here is um, why would you add master options and then select it and not just copy and paste the slide uh, from the film strip view in normal mode I'm assuming. Melody, you want to give us a little more clarification on that question? Why, why, would, why would you add to master options and then select it and not just copy and paste the slide? So yeah, Melody, if you want to give me a little more clarification, we'll come back to that one. Um, another question here is, I am a current subscriber and have the Jeopardy style game show PowerPoint template from long before, um, but I'm no longer finding it in the PowerPoint library. Um, is it still in the library, A, and B, if it's not in the library, can I still use this template? Um, I'm pretty sure it's still there. I will have to go back and double check. Um, and even if it's not, uh, are you asking if you have if you have access to it still? Can you still use it? Are yes. Are there permissions to still use yes. this? You download it. Yep. You got the okay. You can use it forever. Okay, excellent. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, Melody has come back with more clarification on the uh, other question here. Okay, so why would you add master options and then select it and not copy and paste the slide? I would just open the file and copy the slide and paste it into my new presentation. Uh, so there, so you can do that, and it will still add um, those slides to your master view. Um, but I've noticed that there are um, certain times when things don't uh, stay applied to them. Um, so let me see if this will do the same thing that I did for me before. So I'm going to 
get rid of these on my master slide. Oh, I can't tell I get rid of them here. So get rid of them here and then go back to our master slide. Go to these here. Um, so from normal films to view, right? I select these, copy, and then my films to view here, paste. It does still apply, it still does add them and apply all of our theme changes, and it does add them to our master slide. Um, but it actually isn't adding all of master slides, um, just these two, and I'm not I'm not sure why that um, that happens. So you see when I go here, it doesn't it doesn't apply the mm, uh, changes to this text as it should here. See, it's not as large, and it also doesn't mm, highlight this year in this shape either. Um, so, uh, again, it's it's that that mm, is possible. And if you if you only copy in like a, mm, a one slide slide, it, it, it probably won't have any issues. But mm, the cleanest way is is just always copy from master to master, and then just add those slides to your your file. I hope that answered your question, Melody. If you uh, still have questions, please let us know. All right, we will pause on questions. Okay, um, so I just want to show you a couple other files that we have out there. Uh, I'm not going to add them to this, uh, but I just want you to see what other things we have. Um, let's look at this infographic here from Jet Black. And if I preview this, you can see the animation in it. And it's really fun. And it just spins and loops. Uh, so that's fun. Uh, let's look at. Uh, it should be noted that um, when it spins and loops, it does spin and loop nice and smooth. Yes. We're just seeing it through GoToWeb. Oh, is um, there a lag? Yeah. Oh. With 15, per, with 15 frames per second, it looks a little jumpy. Oh. Yes. Um, it's a good thing to note. Uh, so gauges, if I preview this as I click, spins nice and smoothly on my end at least. <laughs> um, and just really quickly, if I go into the master slide view and I change these colors, uh, so this blue is being used here. Maybe I want it to be this orange. And click save. And now they are updated. Uh, maybe let's, let's look at one more. Um, maybe our scenario. So we've set up, um, there are two scenario files that are set up with um, these buttons to jump to different slide numbers depending on what is clicked. So if I click on option one, it'll actually go to slide number two. What if I click on option two, it goes to slide number three because they there are two different types of responses. Um, same with these options here. So let me show you our um, slides here. So if I click on option one, that actually goes this one, and then click on option two, uh, it goes there. Uh, so it it we're trying to mimic an interaction without it actually being a true interaction because you if you wanted to click next every single time you could but um, all right so let me show you now how and where to get these files from uh, so if you have a license to our e-learning template library or or PowerPoint graphic library, um, you have access to all of these files. So if you log into library.elearnbrothers.com, <clears throat> excuse me, and then if you go to the template library homepage, this is the easiest place to go see what we have and uh, how to access each file. So at the top of this page, you can see uh, where we uh, kind of show each of or different styles that we offer. And as you hover over, it'll show you the, the, 
name of the tool that we have files um, released in. So you can see that we have um, Shamrock uh, has some in PowerPoint, Flat Blue does, New Stone, and, and then Jet Black. Uh, so if I click on the PowerPoint link right here on, actually I'm going to do, I like New Stone better. Um, I get a search result page that shows all 20 files, and then if I hover my mouse over them, I get a quick uh, preview of what each file uh, has and how it animates. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so then if I go back to this home page again, uh, so we are always adding uh, new styles and we are currently working on PowerPoint styles and the rest of these that are here. So pretty soon we'll have um, files for 80s Neon, Cobalt, Apple Tree, Campfire, and Movement. Uh, and then we'll, we'll be adding more as time goes on. Um, so that's what I want to show everybody. Uh, I hope uh, you, you you can see the value, uh, just how how easy it is to to build a very quick and good looking uh, file based off of these files. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, yes, I'm letting these come in. Confirming with the styles, you can put your own branding color scheme on it. Correct. Okay, yeah, everything is editable inside these these style things. These are great. Um, storyline question, are they Storyline 2 versions or 360? Mm -hmm. 360. Okay. Um, there's a question about how did you animate that gauge? There was a webinar about animating gauges. Um, I, you know what, Stephanie, if you can find that before this webinar ends, Let's get that out there. But yes, if you go to our e-learning blog and look up, um, I think we called it a PowerPoint dial. You search for that, yep. you'll find that webinar pretty easily. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, a big thank you. Learned a lot in this webinar on how to use master styles. You're welcome. Um, another person says that they really like your tattoos. Oh, thank so you. <laughs> great job, Nick, on, on uh, getting some visual. Thank, thank you. To the webinar. Okay, um, is there any way to add your icons to the library, icon library already present in PowerPoint? Oh, oh, can you add your icons to the library that's in PowerPoint, to the ones that you're drawing out of PowerPoint? I'm Other not, icons that you're drawing out of PowerPoint? I'm not sure I understand. So, okay, is there any way to add icons to the master slides that you're using? Oh. That you can access later. Uh, like on, on, on their own? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mo so any of our files that, that use an icon, most of them are already put onto the master slide of that file anyway. Um, so what you could do, um, if you wanted one file that kind of uh, housed all of these, is you can... Just copy and then go to my master slides, and then we can let's just insert a new layout and just paste these there. And then that way, those always live in your master slides. I, I think that's and what that's they're asking. with that template, though, right? Correct. So you can insert in PowerPoint, there's a insert icons or images library that's a part of. Of PowerPoint, is there possible? To oh, that? we we're not. Um, we don't have files in there. Okay, and it's not possible to edit that. Unfortunately. Okay, good to know. Um, if I like a specific animation in your presentation, for example, the the one with the timeline ticking down, can I just copy the slides from the master view and paste it into my existing PowerPoint, and then the animations will work, or do I have to build those from scratch? No. Um, if you copy and paste like I did from Master Slides, it it it, sh it will retain all the animations. The only time that it won't is if you um, delete those elements and then add add in your own. You'll have to re-add the the animations to them. Okay. 
Um, if I like all of the icons or animations or images or something in one, but I don't want them to be used in this style, is there a faster way for me to mine, so to speak, all of that information out without having to go and save each image in the PowerPoint? Could I export to a zip or could I export to something where it separates all of the graphic files? From the, the rest of the PowerPoint? Uh, not that I'm aware of, uh, other than I think you can export mm. an image by itself. Um, but if if you want to just hold on to those but not edit this file, I would just save mm, a new copy of that file. And so you do have the mm, original still with all, all those in it. Okay. All right. That is all the questions we have. Uh, at this time, if you guys have more questions, want to continue the conversation, by all means, uh, send an email at, uh, to info at elearningbrothers.com. We'd love to, to answer more questions or continue this conversation. Um, and also, if you have any ideas for um, other types of files or layouts that we have not included that you think would be really helpful to include in a style, I would, I would love to hear what those are. So please give a give us that information. I think once the webinar closes, there will there's going to be a uh, short questions uh, section that you can fill out. Let us know what styles you'd like to see, what things you'd like to see inside of uh, PowerPoint. Um, and, and if you want to see more of these, you can schedule a demo. The phone number is there, 801-796-2767. Like I already mentioned, you can send an email to info at elearningbrothers.com. Also, um, Nick, I'm going to put you on the spot here and, and see if you can talk a little bit about <laughs> customizable courseware. Um, this is this new, really cool offering we have. Uh, there's three libraries there, professional soft skills, grip and sales system, safety training. Um, we're doing tons of customizable courseware right now. You can learn more about that at customizable, uh, or elearningbrothers.com slash customizable slash courseware. Um, but will you talk a little bit about what is inside of those as far as PowerPoint goes, Nick? Sure. So. Uh, in each of mm, our courseware files, we include mm, um, mm, ILT files. So um, if you want to teach that course in mm, mm, a classroom, uh, the PowerPoint files that are included there um, go along with the mm, instructor guide. Uh, and, and in that guide, it has prompts for each, each slide. But all of the content, all the images, all the in class activities are already built out for you um, and just as as much as, as these styles are for you that you can edit you can also edit uh, those files in our ILT to to brand them uh, to make them look like um, uh, your own files those are all also I mean, if you don't want to do ILT or, or don't have an opportunity to do the ILT they're fully fledged fleshed out in uh, e-learning software, Lectora, Storyline, and Captivate. Is that right? Yes. Okay, awesome. We're also going to DevLearn. If you're going to be at DevLearn, come and see us. We're giving away iPads, so that's going to be pretty We sure are. Pretty cool. All right, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Nick. Thank we'll you. See you all next time. Bye.